In today's episode of the Weekly Shonen Jump Rankings, we're going to be discussing Black Clover's tragic backstory, Blue Box's surprising twist, and the newest series in Shonen Jump. So join me for the second episode of the Weekly Shonen Jump Rankings. This week we'll be ranking five different series, as two series that I'm currently reading did not have new chapters this week. That would be One Piece and Chojin X, and you'll see on screen here the five series that we will be ranking. But let's jump right into the episode with number five, and that's PPP PPP. This chapter for PPP PPP focused on the backstory of Reijiro, Lucky's brother, and overall it was a really touching backstory and really sad for the most part. This really humanized Reijiro as a character as he is this pinnacle of a genius who is an elite piano player. He's everything really that Lucky has always wanted to be, but of course Reijiro sees it the other way and he wants to have what Lucky has, an ordinary life. I think that's going to be a common theme for the rest of this series, the difference between between being ordinary and being special, and how being special in a given field, having more aptitude for things than something else, can lead to a life that may be more hollow than the people who are able to connect with others of a similar talent level to them. And I thought that was a really good aspect of this chapter, but I do think one of the things that has held this series back from really being one that captures my attention every week is its paneling. Here, the chapter was very dense with dialogue to the point that it got difficult to read, and I would say that was the biggest downside to this chapter this week. One of the highlights of this series is when the characters start playing the piano and you get the really expressive paneling that comes with that. In this chapter, because we didn't get any of that, it just felt like a huge dialogue dump. In this series, there's a lot of telling and not showing, and the main times that we get to see this series show an impact to us is when the characters are playing their instruments and when you have a chapter like this that doesn't have that it kind of feels like they're just telling you what's going on and telling you that this person is sad and overall I thought the backstory was pretty good but I think the execution of it could have been done better paneling wise and that is why it's the fifth chapter this week the best part about this series is when the characters get to play piano and when you have a chapter that doesn't have that it's going to be hard to live up to the hype and next up we have a new series alert with Ayashimon Ayashimon is a newly launched manga for Shonen Jump, and what's really exciting about doing the series is all of these new manga that come up, some that are barely around, I get to talk about and I'll get to rank, and so it was really exciting getting to see my first new series in the magazine for this show, and overall this first chapter was fantastic. One of the best things it has going for it is its artwork. The artwork is constantly incredible with multiple spread pages that were just absolutely gorgeous. And the start of it was really effective. It seems that you're going to get this classic Yakuza story where we're focusing on a traditional mob. And that's what the first page leads us to believe. But then with one turn of the page, we see that the Yakuza are actually all monsters. And this page is breathtaking and instantly got me interested in the series. This spread page alone is enough to want me to continue reading it, which just shows how good the artwork and initial concept is. This story focuses on Mariuo. He is an absolute badass, he is stronger than everyone he runs into, and there was actually a surprising amount of humor in the beginning of this chapter, as he goes from place to place just destroying everything around him because he's that strong and not being able to compete in martial arts or in sumo or even work as just a regular worker. And that was really compelling to start the story and definitely a really funny way. I think the tone of this first chapter was really impressive. You had a lot of really dark kind of horror vibe panels to it, especially with the Yakuza and, and the monstrosities that they are. But then on the other hand, you had a lot of humor in this chapter. So I thought it did a really great job balancing out the humor and more intense moments. But I do have kind of one drop drawback that kind of frustrated me, and that's its over-reliance on speaking to the classic genre tropes of Shonen Jump itself. 
Our main character talks about how he reads Shonen Jump and how he wants to be a Shonen Jump main character, and that's literally why he trained so hard. And while initially that's kind of funny, oh, this person wants to be like Jotro from JoJo, so he's going to train incredibly hard to do so. But when they keep bringing that up, it gets kind of annoying. The main character archetype for so many Shonen Jump characters has already been dried out pretty much completely. So when your only twist on your main character is that he's self-aware of manga and he's self-aware of who he is, it just didn't really hit with me. I think One Punch Man, a series that I'm not even in love with, uh, does that idea way better. At least, obviously, this is only one chapter, but just in the initial, that kind of rubbed me the wrong way. It just felt like Shonen Jump was really giving a wink and a nod to themselves, but it happened so much throughout the chapter that I found it more distracting than helping me, you know, be interested in this character. Um, so that's the one downside, but overall, I think it's a really, really strong start to the series and I'm excited to see where it goes from here. And definitely many panels in this series are breathtaking. And at number three, we have Black Clover. This chapter was another backstory chapter, but it was for Yami, one of the best characters in the entire series. And the best thing that I could say about this chapter is it really got all of the feels for these characters. Flashing back to Yami and seeing him and his progression as this, as this weird outsider who has dark magic, to then being accepted as a captain in the brigade and eventually devoting himself to making sure he gives people who don't normally get an opportunity an opportunity. And a lot of the more recent Black Clover chapters have felt really emotional and reflective, and this chapter is no different, and it's all the better for that. Overall, it's really incredible, but it still feels like it's missing something to be the perfect chapter. A lot of this information we kind of knew before. Most of the things about Yami and his backstory we knew, even though I really liked the phrasing of how he's going to give people a chance who normally wouldn't get it. Overall, most of this information is a little repetitive, and that's why I wouldn't rank it higher. Even though I'm in love with Yami, he's one of the best characters, and it's great getting to see him after so long of not really being in the narrative, but overall, it feels like a recycling of information and another week where it's just delaying to the big fight that we're going to get. And I do think some of this backstory maybe could have been weaved while something more interesting was going on, but that doesn't mean that this chapter wasn't really, really good. Just overall, I think the recycling of information is, again, what kind of keeps it in the middle of the pack for this week. And at number two, we have Blue Box. The reason that Blue Box gets number two this week is because of the separation between our two characters. It has seen that Taiki's finally getting closer and closer to making his move, and then all of a sudden they're separated. And now we're going into summer break, what's going to be a completely different atmosphere than we've gotten up previously to this this point in the series because of how focused it's been on matches coming up currently. And so I think it really sheds a new light for what Blue Box is going to be able to do in the future. And really, it was just an incredibly surprising decision. So plot wise, that's why it comes up here because I did not think that was the direction we were going to go in when I talked about how this was my most anticipated chapter uh, coming into the week. And it definitely did not disappoint. Also, again, the artwork here is incredibly subtle but beautiful, and overall, I think the summer break atmosphere going into the next couple of chapters will be interesting. I think it's an exciting new direction for this series to go in, but also, anytime you go in a new direction, there are going to be causes for concern, and I definitely am nervous that getting too far away from the sports could end up affecting this series, but I'm really excited to see what happens, and of course, the artwork in Blue Box is incredible. It's more subtle than almost every other series here, but the fact that it can make me feel so emotional with just one character drawing um, at multiple points throughout a chapter is another reason why it ranks so highly, and it's a series that I'm really just in love with right now. And at number one, we have Kaiju number eight. This series I didn't talk about last week because it doesn't typically release weekly, but this week we got one of the best chapters I have seen in this story in a while. 
The artwork here is breathtaking, and I know most of these series have really great artwork, but the amount of amazing panels on their own that convey such brutality in their action is just so much more than we typically have gotten with a lot of these other chapters this week, which is a huge reason why I'm putting it this high and it's ranking at number one this week. And the director gets this really subtle development. Throughout most of the series, it's kind of felt that he's a ruthless person and he turned his daughter into someone who is one of the top killing machines of Kaiju. And yet here he's still fighting, he's putting his life on the line to protect his wife and his daughter, which is a really nice moment that I didn't necessarily think was going to happen at least this soon, and it was added seamlessly into this chapter where we really see the threat of the kaiju. The kaiju are way stronger than I think we really know so far in the series, and it's one of the most exciting things about Kaiju 8 right now. The initial concept of this series and aging up the protagonist was enough to get me hooked, and I talk about that in my video on the series. Series. But now adding in more elements of horror and really, really great action panels that are simple but get the job done in conveying what they need to do has made this series one of my most anticipated reads every single week. And those are my rankings for the second week of the Shonen Jump weekly manga. And now moving into the best panel of the week that has to go to Ayashimon. I talked about it when I talked about the series at number four. This panel alone had me sold on the entire series. When I flipped to the second page of Arashimon, this really caught me off guard. It is in capturing of why I want to read this series, and it really gets me excited for the potential future to come for Ayashimon and that is why it is my best panel of the week. Then, best cliffhanger. I think overall the cliffhangers this week were actually a lot weaker than last week's. Last week, I had multiple chapters that I thought could have won best cliffhanger, and if they were this week, they probably would have won, but I have to choose one, and so the best cliffhanger this week is for Kaiju number eight. The last panel of the director and him being shredded and his clothes all ripped up as he's ready to fight uh, this number two Kaiju was absolutely hype, and hopefully we get that fight immediately because the action panels in the series are seriously on another level and so that is why it gets my best cliffhanger but there was no real spot where I was like oh I don't know exactly what's going to happen next week most of these chapter ends uh, were kind of standard but this one definitely was one of the best and for my most anticipated chapter for next week, it's gotta be Black Clover. It feels like we've got two build-up chapters back to back, and we got hit with some emotional greatness with Yami, and now I think things are really going to get desperate as everyone's trying to save Yami, and he just has to watch. This fight's going to be epic and should be one of the best we've seen in a while, and that is why it is my most anticipated chapter going into next week. So thank you guys for watching this episode of the Weekly Shonen Jump Rankings. I'm still working my way through a couple other series, so hopefully in the coming weeks uh, we'll add a series here and there as we get caught up. Let me know which series you want me to read. Right now I've actually picked up Sakamoto Days. That was one that was recommended to me, and I'm really enjoying it. I've only read the first handful of chapters, but it's hilarious, and I'm really excited to add it into the mix of chapters that I'm reviewing, hopefully in the next couple weeks here. So thank you guys for watching this video. What was your favorite chapter of the week? And what was your least favorite chapter of the week? And I hope to see you in the next one.